This is TV5 News at 8, bringing coverage closer to home. Primary 2000 has come and gone, and in its wake, two candidates are vying for president. Good evening, I'm Carrie Lapu. And I'm Cynthia Walker. Our Primary 2000 coverage begins with a recap of local results. In the 63rd District, Representative Fred McElhatton won the GOP nod for a third term. His district includes all of Clarion County and a portion of Armstrong County. State Senator Mary Jo White, a Republican from the 21st District, won her party's bid in Tuesday's primary. White's district covers all of Clarion County. No Democrats were on the ballot for the, state, for the Senate job. Across the state, Al Gore and George W. Bush are adding to their delegate totals after winning the presidential primary. Both men had already earned more than enough delegates from primaries and caucuses in other states to lock up their nominations last month. George W. Bush led the GOP with 73% of the vote, followed by John McCain with 23%, and Steve Forbes received 3% of the vote. On the Democratic side, Al Gore received 74% of the vote, followed by Bill Bradley with 21%. In the U.S. Senate race, Ron Klink won the Democratic primary, defeating Allison Swartz with 41% of the vote. Swartz gained 26% of the vote, followed by Tom Foley with only 25%. And in the Attorney General's race, it was Jim Eisenhower who was declared the winner with just over 5,000 votes for the Democratic nomination. His opponent, John M. Morganelli, captured 50% of the vote. Turning away from primary 2000, last night the Clarion Borough Council met to discuss a of, number of issues, including sidewalk repairs. TV5's Mark Despotakis recaps last night's meeting. Uh, I would like to address the council night, tonight just briefly regarding the, the sidewalks and the issue of, of uh, restoring a lot of them around town. We need to know for sure, when, since we're doing this, that we do it the correct way. It, it is really pretty upsetting to be here for three months and find out that I have a, I don't know, five, ten thousand dollar problem sitting in my front yard. Some strong words and strong opinions heard last night at Clarion Borough Council about the mandate that sidewalks are a liability and must be fixed. After the last council meeting last month, I felt very strongly that indeed the time was way too short. Uh, I myself had had concrete done last year, and I know how long it took for me to finally have someone appear there and actually do the physical work. The problem raises that some residents received a letter in November alerting them of a July 1st deadline, while others just received a letter recently. But council members are still optimistic about the sidewalks being fixed. I mean, I really think that uh, this is an alert to people that it is a problem. Well, they are. They are. They are. They are. Extremely. They always have been. That's right. Mm -hmm. and the, the whole idea behind this was to make them aware, and I know this is what you're talking about, make them aware of the liability. Several proposals were brought up by various members of council as a resolution to ailing sidewalks. But since the meeting had already gone over an hour long, they decided a special work session would be in order. So here's the situation as it stands right now. The letters that have been sent out to residents about the sidewalks will still be in effect, so that means the July 1st deadline still stands. But that could all change with a special meeting that happens this coming Monday at 4 o'clock in the Clarion Borough offices. So we'll just have to wait and see what comes out of that meeting to decide what happens next. In the newsroom, Mark Desperdakis, TV5 News. The Clarion County Prison Board met to discuss the alleged abuse against at the Clarion County Jail. As TV5's Dana Graver reports, changes are on the way. Although the prison board found that allegations of misconduct by guards was not substantiated, the board is still looking at management issues. The prison board continued an executive session to address issues and concerns of Clarion Jail inmates. There were complaints about the mistreatment and the denial of medical attention to three inmates. After an extensive review by the prison board, they found the complaints were without merit and that all actions taken by jail personnel fell within the guidelines on the prison's operations manual. The investigation of the prison guard's alleged misconduct is closed. The board's decision was made after three meetings of an executive session, but the investigation leading up to the board's decision brought up many new questions. But they thought that they were being uh, either mistreated, uh, mishandled by some of the uh, guards, or that they, their money was mishandled, or in some cases, medicine wasn't uh, distributed properly. And uh, so we did investigate those charges uh, as they were presented to us. 
the board's review regarding management issues is continuing. There has been no leadership for the past four years at the jail, and Commissioner David Seifert said the jail needs to be taken a look at. The review will also address the jail's policy and procedures to determine if changes should be made. Seifert recommended evaluations of prison employees should be made more often. Seifert also said it was unclear how or when the prison board will begin to review the management issues. The issues will be reviewed behind closed doors. The group will meet again April 7th during their monthly meeting time. In Clarion County, Dana Graver, TV5 News. A preliminary hearing for Matthew Clapper, the man accused of stabbing two Clarion University students, was held yesterday in front of District Justice Gregory Long. The incident happened at the Alpha Chi Row House back in February, when 21-year-old Michael Visley and 23-year-old Jeremy Earnhardt were allegedly stabbed in the neck by Clapper following an altercation in Visley's room in the house. Long has ordered Clapper to be held on trial for all charges. And the Alpha Chi Row fraternity has been ordered to cease operation by the national headquarters. The group has been at a colony status for approximately three years and a push for full chapter status since December was in progress by the national chapter, but met with opposition in Clarion. Members of Alpha Chi Row contacted by TV5 News had no comment on the matter. Coming up after the break, Clarion University will host a wellness fair tomorrow. A preview of the event coming up. Plus, how can you help your cat? Find out in tonight's edition of Health Speak. All this and more coming up as TV5 News brings coverage closer to home. But first, here's a look at tonight's winning lottery numbers. <laughs> 